Hey everybody, welcome to Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matt. I'm Nate. And I'm Drew. Welcome, fellas. Welcome to another week of the Linux Cast. We're gonna have an excellent show for you tonight. Now, I have been told that the topic that we've chosen for the night room, really that I've chosen, it has is repetitive because I always talk about notes. Um, to those people, I say, um, sorry, I guess. I don't know. I like talking about notes, and we're going to do it again. So we're going to talk about our optimal note-taking solutions, things that we use, things that we ho- wish we could do better, things that we do perfectly, I guess. I don't know. We're, we're just going to have a good time, nerd out about notes. So if you're as much of a nerd note as we are, stick around. But before we jump into that, we're going to have to jump into This Week in FOSS. This is a part of the podcast where we talk about what we've done this week, basically, in Linux and open source and technology and whatever. Uh, you know me in rules. So, uh, Drew, take us away, please. So this past week has been an utter blur. I mean, I remember recording with you guys like last week, but it seemed like yesterday to me. And that's never a good thing when seven days have passed. And I can't tell you anything that I've done over the last seven days. For those of you uh, following last week's podcast, I did say that we just got power. And Hurricane Milton, between working and helping cleaning up and gathering quotes for repairs, I've not actually done very much with regard to Linux, I did install Nextcloud on this, uh, the Jitsi server that we are currently using, and I'm kind of working on that. And so I still have a few things from last week. For example, I promised the second video on Nextcloud, and I'm still holding myself accountable for that, which will be coming out shortly. I'm not going to put a time stamp on it, but shortly. And then next week, and I did install Nobara, which is next week's podcast, just in case any of you guys want to uh, know what next week's going to bring. It's going to be about Nobara, which is a, which is Fedora, but in a different way. And, uh, and I've installed that and been playing around with it and have been actually kind of enjoying it. So there you go. Cool. Uh, Nate, what about you? What you been doing this week? Not much. I actually went on vacation, and for once in my life, I didn't even pull up my laptop at all. Lame. Didn't even touch <laughs> it. Didn't do nothing. <laughs> but I, I will say, I actually did record a video, and I am in the process of editing it, so I'll have my second video up and kind of moving my channel along. And thank you for already, I believe it's already 40 subscribers, which kind of blows my mind, so... Appreciate. It. Oh, and also slice my finger before we got here. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. Avoid sharp things. Uh, all right. So I've done. I, apparently, I've done the most Linux. You guys actually have real world things to do, and I'm just you know the, the Linux nerd here doing Linuxy things. So I've been messing around with Qtile some more, and I've added a few different themes to that, and I completely rewrote my configuration files for that so that it matches the new way of doing the bar that they introduced probably six months ago or so where you can basically set a widget as a variable and then you just call the variables in this in the screen so that's done that's done for so all of my configurations now use that instead of the old way and i've also been messing around i am having a blog problem and my biggest problem is that I joined WordPress. I got a really good deal with WordPress.com. I got three years for a hundred bucks, and that's hosting, a domain name, everything. And and then the creator of WordPress decided he was gonna pull a nutty and go fucking crazy. <laughs> so I don't know if I want to stay on WordPress or not. So I I don't. And then I try. I've tried Hugo for like the main website for the 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 the, the channel. I, I just don't like it very much. I mean, it's fine, but I just don't I just don't care for it. I liked Eleventy a lot better, but Eleventy is still broken. So I, I don't know where I'm going. I'm, I'm looking into Ghost, which is not open source, but you can self-host it. So I've been thinking about that. Uh, there's Drupal and Ju- uh, Joomla or whatever it is. I've never used those before, but I might look, choose that. So I'm, I'm having a, like a musical chairs thing with blog software, and I'm not sure I'm happy about it. Like, I just... <laughs> I, my problem is that I, I want simultaneously to be able to write everything in Markdown, which almost requires me to use like a static site generator like Hugo or Eleven D or uh, Jekyll. All those will do that for me, and that'll be fine. But that requires a lot of work on my end to set up. 
I would prefer not to do any work because I'm also a lazy bastard. So I just want to press a button and work. But I, I can't seem to f split that difference. And that's where I'm struggling right now. So those are the things that I've basically been doing uh, this week. It seems like there's something else, but I don't remember what it was. It's been, also been a crazy, crazy week. So, yeah, there you go. Anyways, there's our, our weekend floss, such as it, as it is. Things will start to normalize. I'm sure Nate's back from vacation. Uh, hopefully, there's no more freaking hurricanes, Drew. You guys, you I'm done for the year. Florida. I'm just saying, I'm done for the year. Yeah. <laughs> We've had our fill for two, two, two in a row, and I think we're uh, we're done for the year. Hopefully, good, because there's been enough of that shit. No kidding. Yeah. So, anyways, there, there's that. Let's go ahead and move on to the main topic, which is note-taking solutions. So, you guys probably know this about me. If you've watched the channel, you watched, listen to the podcast, I'm a bit of a note-taking nerd, and I make videos on this constantly, according to some people. Like, that's all I do is make note-taking videos, which is not true no. at all. Okay, I make other things, too. I talk about OpenSUSE a lot, okay? That's not a note-taking solution. It enables note-taking. <laughs> but... Anyways, I think that note-taking is very important. That's the reason why I talk about it a lot. So what I thought we would do tonight is just kind of go around first and talk about what our current note-taking solution is. Do we have something elaborate or are we just opening up a markdown file or a text file in Vim or Genie or whatever? Or do we have syncing solutions that we enjoy? So we're just kind of a, a meandering solution towards what we use now. And then we can get into what we'd prefer to use if we had a way to improve things. So... What do you guys currently use first? We'll start with Nate. Uh, so I actually just got introduced to a note-taking app called Notes Nook. And I have started using it, and I'm really enjoying it. One of the biggest things is that I have this, yes, this is kind of a shield, but I have this massive Samsung tablet. And to my surprise, it works extremely well with the S Pen. There's a lot of functions and stuff that I can do. And so it's easy for me just even at work just to pull open Notes Nook and just write it down real quick. It follows very quickly. It's easy to edit if it makes a mistake. And as bad as my writing is, it still understands and reads the words correctly, which is great for me. And so I've been using it quite a bit lately. That's the main one I've been using, but I still like my micro. I will still every once in a while just pull up a Linux terminal and micro something together i have questions about notes nook so your this is a web app correct so you're only going you're going using mm -mm. the web no 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 okay no it actually has so it has two that's one of the things uh it has a flat pack that is available okay but it also if you download from the website then it's also a app image that okay. you can use as well and both of them work fine. I just prefer the flat pack, so that's what I installed. The reason why I'm asking is because I know that there's a free version and I know that there's a pay version. And so yes. are the files themselves actually being hosted on Notes Nook as a cloud storage? Yes. Okay. Yes. If if you're especially if you do the paid version like I do. I did pay for it. It's only like uh, I think like a little over four dollars a month. Oh, and yeah, so yeah. for me to be able just to have something, and another great thing is that you can also export it to Markdown if you use Nextcloud okay. as well. So even if you like, you know, wind up saying, okay, I don't want to use it anymore. If you have Nextcloud and download it as Markdown so Nextcloud can read it, it'll automatically still be there. So all that's, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. I really like it. I have it on my tablet. I have it on this desktop. I have it on my Windows laptop. I have it on my phone, anywhere that I go, it's there. So it's just synchronizing a folder? Is that, yes. I'm, I'm assuming, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, and it also, like, it has multiple different, like, you can split it out, almost like uh, Obsidian does. You okay. can split it out into multiple different things. Yeah. Cool. Cool. That's similar to, like, uh, like it'd be like an open source version of Evernote, right? Yes. But to me, a little bit more polished. <laughs> just oh, wow. being honest. Okay. I've did you ever use, did you guys use Evernote for any extended period of time? Just a little, like back yeah. in college, but yeah. almost immediately we went, we went to OneNote at that point. When it came to Evernote, it was always, 
I didn't feel like this at first, but at least since then, it felt like it was like a moving target, like they're always changing something. Like, you know, at first it was like, you know, it was just an application, and then they had a subscription service, and then they had all this stuff, and then there, there was some controversy a few years ago about, you know, data collection or something like that, and it's it's always prevented me from going back and actually trying it again, because it, it, it just doesn't feel like a kosher thing to use now. Like, it's like... Because it was the most popular, maybe that's not the one that I want to use. I don't even know if it's the most popular one anymore, um, to be honest with you. I mean, what would you guys think the most popular Linux or most popular note-taking thing is? Probably Vim and Linux. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question, though. I, I, I was Actually, I was thinking more Obsidian. I see a lot of people using Obsidian. Like, like there's a couple streamers that I they like always have an obsidian up with their notes and stuff so it wouldn't surprise me if obsidian is that I know a lot of people use notion for notes which is just boggles my mind because it's it's like the most I mean obsidian or, or notion is one of those things where it's like it has a ton of features that I'd have no clue what I want to do with them like like why do I need all of that right like i'm a fairly organized person but that just takes it way too far so i don't know uh drew what are you or what are you currently using what i'm currently using is well there's two parts to it obviously we need a <laughs> we need a cloud solution to, to store the files on because i don't store things locally i try to either use github or most like most recently Nextcloud. So with Nextcloud, I just have my notes folder or directory. And then I use for software on, you know, for actually editing the markdown files, I just still use Genie. And I use Genie for just about everything for writing bash scripts or markdown files or anything. And the way you set it up, I remember showing Matt like a couple months ago or more that when you set it up a certain way, like I hit like alt period on my screen and it shows the markdown preview of whatever I'm writing that particular markdown file. And it is a plugin. It's an additional plugin that you would use uh, within Genie called markdown <laughs> or something similar to that markdown, markdown preview. I think it's just called markdown preview. Anyway, that's what I'm doing right now. I've tried lots of different things and occasionally like, with no, to uh, to Nate's point, I will use it like a terminal editor, whether it be Vim or Micro sometimes. But overall, ninety something percent of the time, I use Genie to actually create and edit my Markdown files. Yeah, Drew, I blame you for most of my problems. Did you know that? <laughs> you know, there's it. There's a there's a huge difference when we're talking about like notes because there's like little notes, <laughs> big notes, and then documentation, and then like, what is it called? Third brain or something like that, or second brain type stuff where you're doing a bunch of stuff that I can't even, cons I can't even figure it out at all. So yeah, I, I understand <laughs> your frustration with me, Matt. I <laughs> So you point, so a, a few months ago, you pointed me towards an application called IOTUS and yeah. that solved my problems. I think, thought like i thought that a combination of iotis and uh, next cloud would be like that's my solution i left google keep i don't have it installed i still don't have it installed my problem is I, I was in a stable solution like like i didn't like google keep but it was the solution that i was using and it was fine so i used i'd used it for years right and now because I'm a tradi in traditional Matt fashion, I was <laughs> I discovered other things to try, and because my ADD connection, I have to try everything, right? And I'm not, and because of that, I'm never really truly happy with what I'm using, and that's part of the reason why I think that I, I mean, I've always tried like every note taking application out there, like. It, I mean, people always accuse me, like, Matt, you, you change your mind too often. That's true, but I also I have a YouTube channel. I make content on this kind of stuff, so it just seems like I'm changing stuff. But I, I think right now my note-taking situation is a mess, and I don't like it. I, I mean, I have a way of doing things. So, like, I, I, I have NextCloud set up. I have all my notes in NextCloud. But the client situation is where I'm faltering a little bit because the, the notes – app for Nextcloud on iOS is pure dog shit. It's, like, it's just like not good. It's functional 
kind of. It looks like it looks very bad, uh, and it that and not to be a snob when it comes to UI design, but the lack of a good design does impede its functionality a little bit because it's so, there small touch targets in, in in there make it harder to click. Sometimes I'm tapping on things. Part of that is because I have big fat mat hands, right? But it, it just makes it really hard to, to think. And and if it reads everything out of the notes directory, which is you would think would be okay, but because of my organized br or mi misorganized brain, I like to have subdirectories in there, and some of those I don't want to appear in the application. I would rather just have a dedicated directory uh, for that. So I had to move the stuff that I'd normally put in the notes directory outside of it, so it doesn't included get included in the client on the mobile phone. So that was something that I didn't want to do. So my current setup is still Nextcloud and IOTIS on the desktop, which is fine, but the problem is the majority of my notes are taken on the phone. It's like I, I'm like today I'm, I was out at the grocery store and I had an idea for video. I open up the notes application, I just jot it down. Or I have a, I have something that I know I have to do for work or whatever, I put it in there. And because the client's not very good, I'm having a hard time. Now, the problem is that on Android, I think that there are several applications that you can use for front end for Nextcloud. Like there's several of them. On iOS, there's two. Like there's Joplin and there's the official Nextcloud Notes app. As far as I can find, like maybe there's something else, but I haven't found it, and that's that's where my problem is. So much so that I've <laughs> I, I considered actually uh, switching back to Android just so I could find different applications to use, but I didn't I didn't do that. Um, I had instead I bought a new keyboard, <laughs> so <laughs> I did. <laughs> I can't help it. Uh, I'll talk about that later. Anyway, it was my current solution is just it's just a mess. But Nextcloud really is the like I I think that there's two things we should talk about. First, we could talk about the clients a little bit more themselves, and then we'll talk a bit more about the the syncing solutions that we've tried over the course of you know the years or whatever, because I think sync is an important part of it. So. Do you guys have any problems with the current way that you're synchronizing your notes? Is there a way that you think that it could improve? Go ahead, Nate. I was gonna, <laughs> Sorry, I didn't find I was going to jump anyway. in, but go ahead, Nate. No, you can go ahead. I'm trying well, to think of this Well, I mean, head. so I think there's two major, I mean, to me, there are kind of two major ways to do this. One would be like we've been talking about with Nextcloud. The other one is going to be a, a Git, like GitHub or GitLab. But, you know, Nate, just said something about notes nook. I know that there are there's standard notes as well that has, I guess, a service, a cloud-based service as well. And there, you know, there are other things that are probably I can't even think of right now. But the truth of the matter is, I think when you're talking about mobile clients, well, you know, what you were just doing, Matt, I, I, I don't have like a really good solution because I don't use mobile very often for notes other than like looking at lists. And the one that I look at on Android that I think is maybe developed for iOS is called QuillPad. And that is something I, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if there's an iOS client for it, but it's okay. And the one thing that I think it offers, which I've never even tried before, is notebooks within the application so that you could... For example, you know, create like idea notebook, for example, or something like that. And that would, that would probably keep you from having to see all the notes in one shot. But I recognize that the, the, the next cloud notes client for mobile is a little lacking. I just don't happen to be like a, like a mobile user very often. Okay, so QuillPad is on iOS, but it's not the same thing. Okay. Something right. different. I, th I think you'd mentioned that before because I'd actually downloaded this before. Yeah, it's different. That's a shame. Yeah, it seems like iOS causes all my problems. Uh, what about you, Nate? Is there, is there something about your syncing solution right now that you would want to improve? or? Probably once I get my server fully set up with Proxmox and under TrueNAS, probably figure out how to way to get my next cloud to immediately sync to my true NAS would probably be what I want to do. I can help you with that. Just saying. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That, I mean, that's really the only thing that I, cause I want to be able to use my application 
it immediately syncs to my next cloud and I can, you know, do markdown and then have it automatically just go straight to my to my um, TrueNAS, which I know that with running Proxmox and then TrueNAS, it can be a little bit finicky, but I'd rather do that than just a straight TrueNAS, personally. I wanted to say that I did read a couple of the uh, comments, by the way, and one of them, uh, Purple Dragon says, Standard Notes has one of the best mobile note interfaces I've used. And Matt, just because we both use ProtonMail, uh, Proton has decided they were going to actually create a business relationship with Standard Notes. That's not part of their actual, their, their stuff yet, you know, but Standard Notes is going to be integrated within Proton Mail at some point. I'll send you a, a link to the article because I think it is an inch. It was back in April that they announced this, uh, this relationship with Standard Notes. And uh, that's something that I'm looking forward to, to see what they, what they do with that. So did they buy standard notes or is they may the have, I don't remember exactly the, the article specifics, but I remember that they, the CEO or the head of, of proton mail said that they had acquired their, or did something. They, they're now incorporating them into, uh, they wanted to incorporate both communities basically. Cause one of the big note taking applications was bought by automatic. I'm not sure which one. The problem is there's like there's two that have really s s like similar names standard notes and like simple notes or simple something like that one of them was bought by automatic yeah well i know standard notes was the one for proton so yeah um so so my my thing is like i'm not opposed to using something else even something that takes me outside of next cloud i like i'm not opposed to it what what i I'm torn between having a simple something very simple like uh, Google Keep was. Like Google Keep's just like there's not folders, there's there's tags I think, but you you know there's nothing way to organize. You just shove everything. It's there that you, that's all you do, right? And then there's some you know, like something like Note Notes Note that does like literally everything that you'd wanted to do or Obsidian that you wanted to do. And I don't know which direction would make me happier. It feels like if I I'm take more notes if it was simpler right because i'm not going to be messing around with tinkering with all the cool features but also there's cool features over there <laughs> you know I, I want cool features so i, I that's my oh, always my overarching you know problem with, with any of this stuff is because it's you know I, i'm not sure which direction there i want to go and, and the, the more infrastructure i put into like next cloud the more i like i, like, I want to I really like Mixcloud, and Notes is primarily one of the reasons why we talked about that on, on that one podcast, right? So, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I wish there was more. Like, mobile is the problem for me right now. Like, really, to be honest with you, and that's where I'm going. And it has nothing to do with the syncing; it's more with the clients. So, if if there was. Do you think that I, I'm just asking the question, I mean, because I thought that you were enjoying IOTIS is because of its simplicity. Is it not? It works is it too simple? I guess is the question. No, it works. It works. It works fine, right? It allows me to organize things in, into uh, categories or into folders or whatever, and it has tags and stuff. So it has just enough complexity where it allows me to be organized and stuff. And but it doesn't overwhelm me with like um, mind maps and 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 uh, you know uh, internal linking between different notes and stuff like that. I don't need any of that stuff really. Uh, I mean, it was cool to play with when I was using Obsidian, but I didn't really need it, right? And barely ever used the advanced functionality and stuff. So Iota's on the desktop is actually fine. I I do wish that there was like a QT version of that for when I'm like in Plasma because GTK just doesn't work well outside of GNOME, not really. It works okay, just it doesn't always quite fit in. And when I'm in a window manager, especially because I use the flat pack, can I just have a sidebar here for a second to rant for up flat packs? How is it that this thing is supposed to be the premier way of getting applications these days, like across Linux? Like it's it beats Snap out because Ubuntu is the only one that uses Snaps, and it, everyone says like oh, Flatpaks is the thing that you want to use if you're going to use a containerized package format, and yet they can't do themes right. Like, like it's no matter what, it comes out white at Weta, right? At least do the dark version, right? If if you just did, maybe it's just me because like I, I prefer dark versions, but 
the 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 white version of Edwita the Edwita theme is the fugliest piece of garbage you've ever seen in your life, and it should not it should just be banned from all existence. And they use that as their default one. Just use the the dark version, and I don't think anybody would care about the theming, right? It did, but but it just it bugs me. Like, it, anyways, that's my problem with iOS. It's just that it doesn't do themes. Now there's a way to work around that, but you have to do it per app, which is the most frustrating thing ever. So. I, I about said something really bad there, so I didn't do it. But yeah, I my problems with that are all aesthetic. But in the synchronizing work stuff works fine. It's all mobile that I'm having the, the biggest problem with. That and uh, lusting after other things like uh, someone I someone other than Nate mentioned Note Snook, so I thought you know maybe I'll go look at that someday. And then uh, like Q own notes has the all of the KDE features and stuff that you know yeah it does <laughs> like <laughs> like that also syncs with with nextcloud so. i know it does i know it does but i don't know i don't like the interface i've tried it i mean i just didn't like the interface at all i mean we can go through like all the markdown editors and stuff that we've gone through and and just kind of like either beat them up or go, yeah, that was really good. I just don't happen to use it. Let's do that. Okay. Let, so what are some of the ones, Drew, we'll just go right to you. What are some of the ones that you've tried that you've liked? I have tried, oh, the ones that I've liked. So I like-ish apostrophe. I like-ish apostrophe a bit. Uh, I liked Ghostwriter a little bit more uh, when it came right down to it. I thought that it fit into, I don't know, I'm much more of a GTK user and I thought that the uh, Ghostwriter worked fine within the GTK. I've tried MarkText. I think you did an entire video on MarkText at some point, Matt. Uh, I thought that was really good. It's not being developed, even though one of the forks for MarkText is being, is is still working. I, I liked, I, I really liked the um, Zettler. There we go, Zettler. I thought that was, Good. And if I had to maybe use a full like kind of environment, I think maybe Zettler would be something I I would choose to. I, in fact, I did it at some point for about a month until I was just like, no, I just I just didn't like it. It just seemed more it seemed to be overkill, basically. And I think that's where a lot of us kind of either choose our markdown editor, of you know, get because it's either too much or way too little. And we have to fall somewhere in the middle on this because, like I said, I have tried Obsidian, I've tried Joplin, and I just thought those were too much for me. So I needed to have something a little bit more scaled back. Nate, what about you? What are some ones that you try that don't use that you liked? Probably, I really liked Joplin for a little while, but I had problems with the sync constantly. And so that eventually pulled me away from it. And after that, I kind of just used Micro for a while, and also Samsung Notes, which they mm. sync. That's about it. And it wasn't until I started using Notes Nook that I really started getting back into absolutely taking notes. Because since then, it was either Samsung Notes or an actual physical... Well, I even wrote down a physical paper. You are <laughs> and so And that old. was basically... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know, but th that was basically all I did, and I have, you know, like, well, I have a collection of books, of old tech books that most people just throw away, they don't care, but to me, they're history, and I'll still buy them, and I like to, you know, put them in a bookcase, I'll read some, and to take notes, I would just do it, you know, physically, I'd have my book in front of me, and I would just use pen and paper, but for me... Joplin was one. I did try Obsidian. I hated it. I don't know why. Just the layout didn't work for me at all. And this has been the best one so far that I've used. I will say I did use uh, OneNote. Still hate Microsoft. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Good. Well, Drew, what was you mentioned some of them, but what I know you went through a you did a whole video on ones that you were that you tried. Were there some there that you like absolutely did not like? Well. I mean, I really wished I'd liked one note. Sorry, one note. I mean, own cloud, own note better. I wish I'd liked. Is it own note? Am, Q am own right notes. Now? I think you're Q own right. note. Yeah. I wish I'd liked that better because of its synchronizing with Nextcloud. I just didn't like it. I just had like big problems with it. 
Uh, the one thing that I was surprised that I liked though, Matt, was actually using VS Codium with plugins, with certain plugins. I mean, it, like I said, you know, <laughs> talk about overkill, right? I mean, it does a lot more than just markdown files, but if you set it up correctly, it's, it's kind of a nice experience. I hate to say that, but that's the truth. I thought the VS Codium was probably going to be one of my, maybe my second choice at, at, at that time, not anymore, obviously, but at that time I thought, wow, this, this could work, you know, because of all the, 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 the tools that you have with VS Codium. But I'm trying to think the ones that I just hated. I did not like LogSeq, and I know I'm sorry for those of you that have mentioned it in the uh, in the chat. I did not care for LogSeq. I don't know why I didn't like it. I don't remember that far back. I just remember that I, I thought it was like, uh, maybe I just had a hard time actually getting started with it. Maybe that was what the, the issue was. But like I said, Obsidian, and, and, and actually, I think if I had to rank the two, and I know it's not fair because Joplin is open source, right? Open, open source and Obsidian is not. I thought Obsidian was significantly better than Joplin. I, I'm sorry to say that. That's the, that's the truth, though. Yeah, I, agree. I actually agree with that. Jo Joplin, okay, so I, my problem with Joplin is that I had a bad experience when I first used it for the first time because it was a snap. And back then, all snaps were slow. Like, like press the button, wait three minutes, and it will launch kind of slow, right? And yes, they've got it gotten way better, like way, way better. But that was my first introduction, and it was just seemed to be worse with Joplin. And then I used it more recently, and when I first started using Nextcloud, it does not synchronize well with Nextcloud because it doesn't actually synchronize the stuff to Nextcloud. It synchronizes portions of the notes and like into weird things. So it's not like you can go up to your Nextcloud folder or whatever and just see a markdown file there that you could edit. That'd be really cool because then you could use other clients if you decided to move away from Joplin or whatever. You could do it. Uh, but no, it actually feels like it's more. It's like it's proprietary to Joplin, and like it's the only thing that can read those notes. It's really weird. Um, now maybe it's possible I was doing something wrong. I mean, there's always that possibility. But just that was that was the reason why. Because like, it feels like Joplin should be the thing, right? Because it, it it's not quite as full featured as like ever you know uh, like Evernote or whatever. It, it's it's not quite as weird as Obsidian is when it comes to like vaults and managing mind spaces and all that weird stuff, right? It's just a good it's supposed to be a good note taking application. But it really borks the synchronization part. Like, at least for me, it just did not work very well. So that's one that I tried. Like, my problem is, like, I've tried them all. And, and some of them, they all, maybe it's because I'm a cynical, you know, douchebag. But every one that I try has something wrong with it. Maybe I'm just looking for something wrong with it. But, you, you know, so, like, I tried Trillium Notes. That was, like, that was, like, the most Electron app ever. And then I tried Zettler, and I don't really remember much about it, but I didn't care for it. I tried no, Notes. No, it's that's very been... electronic. I, I know that's, that's not something that you care for, Matt. It, it's an Electron app as well. There are good Electron apps that that don't feel like Electron apps. You know, like like even like the the Proton Mail application, you you know that's an Electron app and it feels kind of like an Electron app, but it doesn't bug me because it still feels okay, right? There's uh, some native integration. You can right click in the application and stuff like that, and it works fairly well. But s some Electron apps just look like Electron and feel like Electron apps, and those were two of them. I, I tried Obsidian there for a while. I do like Obsidian, but not for note taking. I actually liked it for writing for a little while. I got out of that simply because I went back to Vim, and like I I'm always gonna gonna return to Vim. The the one that I want to go back to to try, like like I used it ages and ages ago, but didn't use Nextcloud at that point, is called NB, and it's a terminal note taking application. And now that I use Nextcloud, I could use NB inside of the Nextcloud folder and have that being my synchrony because that was my, was my biggest problem with it. Like, there's no way to synchronize this and you have to have something separate to synchronize it. Now that I use Nextcloud, I have that solution. And I think that that could be, the for at least for the desktop, a solution for me if I decided to not use IOTIS anymore because I'm always in the terminal anyways. When I want to take a note, I'm often there 
and being able to have basically what what amounts to an alias to take a note and with some note taking features added in that could be really good so i want to revisit that i don't even know if it's still maintained to be honest with you it very well a lot of these things have been a couple of years since i looked at them so things come and go so that's one i really i i when you did videos on that matt i thought that was really like especially if you're a vim user I mean, I've never tried, let's put it this way. I've never tried the Emacs solution. I know that there are others that have tried the Emacs uh, note-taking solution. So like, I mean, my God, that's powerful. I, I get that, in, you know, in org mode. But NB sounded like a really good kind of like text terminal, rather, application that could could do exactly what you're talking about. You know, make it very simple for you to manage everything. As long as you have your synchronization whether it be, it doesn't have to be next cloud, but it can be anything, you know, it, it just seems like that's a really sparse and streamlined solution. I really looked at, and I know that you have too, Matt, there's others that are kind of fall outside of the markdown area. Like I think cherry tree, for example, or tiddly wiki, things like that, that are kind of like are, and, and you used a text one at some point, did you not? Like it just, it was just text files. Oh, that's, um, I don't remember what that's called, but it was just basically, it just created, I think it was actually a script that just basically created a, a okay. .txt file. Um, but yeah. It was like a was, flat, it was like a flat database type thing. And yeah. Yeah. There's, there's several of them that are outside. Like you use, but Mark, the one that you use for your documentation, that's Markdown based, right? Yeah. Yeah. I see. I, I was... You got again. I blame everything on you, but you, 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 you got me looking into that document kind of stuff. And there's a, there's several of them like that that are out there. Oh, you're talking about MK Docs, correct? Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. For, yeah. for the, your documentation stuff. Yeah, and my thing is, I don't. None of my notes are ever going to be like the documentation stuff. And we'll talk more about that later. I want to talk a little bit more about documentation later. But the none of the, those types of things really would work for. Oh, there was. I know. I think I know what you're talking about. You were talking about ZimWiki. Yes, thank you. There you go. Yeah. That Zim, like yeah, ZimWiki. I used that for a long time, and it's no longer maintained, as far as I know. But yeah, my problem with ZimWiki is it, it did use Markdown, but it used weird Markdown. Same thing with Vim, VimWiki, right? They they decided that, well, the biggest problem. Here comes another Matt rant. <laughs> the the problem with Markdown is that there's different like languages of it right and they all like Get, github has their own uh, you know you know there there are just several of them that have very slight variations on how what it means to do markdown and that doesn't work well for me because i i move around apps too much right if i was just going to stick with something it'd be fine but like i used vimwiki for a long time like it was just just that's basically it was Markdown, but it did it in a weird way. And getting those notes out of VimWiki to something else was impossible. Like, it was just did not work. So I still have a whole folder of notes in .wiki format that can't be taken anywhere else. Like, I have to actually install VimWiki to use it, and it's not great, right? ZimWiki did something very similar, only you could at least get into the app, into the... The files themselves even if it wasn't using markdown so they were somewhat readable so that it was fine and the 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 wiki stuff too was readable just none of the you know markdown stuff came through in anything else which is you know so those those two those are like my first two linux note-taking apps zimwiki and vimwiki and yeah zimwiki I, I feel like i looked at it fairly recently and it's still very much the same as it always was uh, but I don't know. It just didn't stick with me this time as it did the, the first time around. So I, I think that when it comes to notes, the, the there's two ways that we could go about the next part of this. So like we talked about just regular note taking application. And I don't know, Nate, if you do your own documentation like Drew and I do, but when it comes to taking like notes for documentation, I think we could talk about that a little bit. Cause I know Drew, you've had a little bit of an adventure going through trying to figure out how you're going to, to uh, display that not only for yourself, but for the public. Right. So why don't you talk about that a little bit? I really like obviously uh, using GitHub, but I thought to myself, there's probably a way to do this on my own website. And instead of, and, and, Frankly, it is using GitHub in some weird way, but but I'm using MK Docs, and it is if 
I mean, I, I kind of wanted to like recommend that when Matt was saying, you know, I don't like Hugo. I like like try MK Docs because even if it is, you know, it is a static site generator, it is kind of built for documentation, but at the same time, it, it can actually suffice as a as just a regular old website you know it just it has the functionality that i think i needed it has rss it has and it actually has a pretty good i don't use it but it does have a a blog that you could like enable which is kind of nice but as far as mk docs is concerned i make sure that i want I, I try to make things as simple as possible. If someone sees a video that I've done, for example, even this, the installation for MK Docs, it's right there on that website. It has been actually created as a markdown file that happens to go to my GitHub. And then that gets built on Cloudflare pages as a static page on my website. So I know that sounds convoluted, but I think I did a video on this. So if you are interested, you can go take, take, a, take a gander at that, that video to, and it explains how that works. But there's probably a follow-up video that, that can be done just to like, because I learned quite a bit more after the fact. I think I was telling you, Matt, it's like you do this video and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I got like six other things I need to say about this particular subject and I just didn't do it yet. So anyway, MK Docs, fantastic for if you want to create a public documentation that seems really that's pretty easy to actually start and uh, create nate do you take do you use, i mean i know there's like probably a, a difference between your notes and stuff but do you have a uh, like a documentation thing that you do or, or is that something you're not interested in so funny enough i actually just use uh gitlab and i used to do all of mine in vs code for my documentation and just uh, do a markdown file but since I've switched to Note Snook, I have learned categories because you can set like red, blue, purple, and it has been a life changer for me to be able just to do a quick, simple, you know, copy and paste or a screenshot and just pop it in and I can, you know, export it as a markdown file. And it seems to work fine for me. And I, I still, I still go to GitHub. That's where I keep everything. So Nate's it's going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> <It's having> some... <laughs> Something just happened. It just randomly just went crazy. So Linux audio problem. All right. Yep. So so for my documentation stuff is so I'm 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 gonna try notes nook because now that you're talking talking up at least for notes, I'll give that a try. But for my documentation, I just use a simple repository. I looked at MK Docs because <laughs> Nate's performing surgery. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at MK Docs, Drew, because you talked it up so much, and I thought, well, like, that's really cool. And because, you know, we both put, I mean, part of the charm behind that is not because you're using it for yourself, but because it allows you to put it out there, right, as a public-facing thing. And you want to have, if you're going to do that, you want it to have it in a, a organized and well-presented manner, right? So I looked at it, but I don't... I don't know that I wanted to go that far because part of the things that has been so successful with me right now is for the documentation. So I was like, when I re when I do something and then I document how I did it, I just put it in the repository. And usually when I try to complicate things, I stop doing them, right? So if, if I add something to that process, I've, I'm worried that I would stop doing it, right? And I don't... I. That's just more of a personality quirk, not anything against MK Docs, but I feel like the more simple way of doing it is that it's just a repository. I just put a markdown file in there. I have a I have a an alias I can use when I need to create something like that, and that, like a staging directory where I can just put stuff, and then I can go organize it when I need to, and that works out so well for me that I think that that's the way that I want to do it, but. From a from a public facing perspective, I think that GitHub or, or and GitLab offer some interesting hurdles because they when you go to GitHub and GitLab, they look like GitHub and GitLab, right? You know, and and it's I think that for our type of documentation is not that big of a deal because all the stuff that I do for that, and I think for most of the stuff that you do, it's gonna have something to do with you know window manager or an application on Linux or some code or something like that. 
and that works well enough on GitLab, but outside of that, maybe it wouldn't work. So if I were going to expand outside of what, you know, the Linux sphere, that wouldn't work that well. But overall, it works fine for what it is. My biggest problem with the documentation solution that I have right now is that I mostly it's just a it's a habit forming thing. Like the the other the last one I did was on the Plex thing, and I do that, and then I put it in that staging directory that I just mentioned. Then it stays there and lingers for a while because I forgot that I did it. So every once in a while I'll have to go and you know just clean that thing out and put things where it needs to go. Also, I, I have this stupid problem where I will write down how to do something, but I'll write it down wrong. And then I will go through and... Because usually I'm basically just doing that for myself. So I go back through and redo it and realize that I missed a step. And completely... Like I did this with um, NFS and AutoFS. I, I made the notes following along with Jay from Linux, Learn Linux TV. for He did the entire series on that. And wrote everything down without doing it. And then we went back and did it and realized that I missed a couple steps. And it was not a great thing to feel it because then I had to go back to the video and, you know, retry it again. So really my lesson to be learned there is that I need to be more thorough in making sure when I actually write things down that I'm writing them down properly. So that's more of a, of a you know, a big me problem, right? I actually, I think you're right in the terms of like, because I don't have like everything in my MK docs, I think that that's just like you were describing public face for specific documentation. I, I have some <laughs> other stuff too, but if, you know, necessarily if, if you're looking at uh, certain like directories, for example, I can throw something in a specific directory, like just like, kind of like you were just talking about staging, you know, a staging directory and keep that and that doesn't actually have to be seen by the public and can just be like there on github and then if i want to i could just move it out of that space and stuff like that which is which is cool too but i have uh, we're going to talk more about when we get to our nuggies of the week i will say that i have installed gitia that's going to be my nuggie of the week sorry for the spoiler but and i really like maybe some of the documentation stuff on Gitia that is like self-hosted. So that's just my notes, no one else's type thing, you know? So that's something I want to, well, maybe we'll talk about. Something I've been thinking about, Drew, is that um, right now I have it all in one repository and then separated out into directories within the repository for different things like, you know, apps and, and home lab and stuff like that. I don't know what do you, what is your opinion on doing it like like for scripts and stuff and window managers and stuff and putting all of the documentation for those things with those things specifically so like if if I have documentation on Qtel putting it in my Qtel configuration folder I've been struggling with that because I like the idea of having everything together that satisfies my organizational brain but also it also kind of makes sense to have that documentation with Qtel or with Awesome Window Manager or whatever itself. What, what do you think about that? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think that, I mean, for me, when I write scripts, I keep them separate from any type of like configuration files because I want them to be separate for sure. And you know, I keep everything in my dots, you know, in my, my, my dots files for configuration. But certain things I've tried to break, break into like a, its own category. Like for example, DWM, is its own category to me, you know, for me to say, okay, these are scripts that go with DWM. This is co configuration stuff that goes with DWM. So yeah, I can see where you would want to maybe like break it down into kind of like smaller parts for specific subjects. I think that's probably a more palatable way. If you're, I mean, is it for you or for the public use? I guess that's the question. Well, the problem is, is that it's, it is for me, but I also, because I put it out there, people see it. Right. So yeah. what I thought about just doing was creating a sim link, right. Just put, taking the documentation and sim linking it into the, like the Qtile or whatever, 
and I don't know how that will show up on, on like GitLab. Uh, I think it'll just show up as a link, which is not really what I want to do. Or maybe I could just copy and paste it. I don't know. Nate, when you, I don't know what you have up on GitLab. I'm be honest with you, I don't think I've ever been to your GitLab or GitHub or whatever. Do you are you one of those annoying people who actually writes their readmes, or or uh, do you just put your <laughs> stuff out there? So <laughs> it depends on the topic. A lot of times, I actually just I only have a private section that I do. That's the only thing I will do. Uh, I don't know what is going on with my audio, but it's about to drive me nuts. I'm 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 probably going to take this thing and throw it in the trash by the time I'm done because I'm sick of it. Anyways, <laughs> but the fact of the matter, sorry, it's side red. The fact of the matter is a lot of stuff I keep private as far as my notes go, but I am one of those that depending on the subject, then I might push it public so people could actually use it and actually do it. My biggest issue I have is that I fork other people's stuff too. So I'm one of those annoying people. So I find some like documentation and fork it. <laughs> I'm horrible at readme's guys. Like really, really bad. So I have all of this stuff up on my GitLab. You know, five years worth of Qtile and i3 and uh, suckless tools. All this, these c configuration files for all this stuff. Various versions of it from different points in time. Different rices. Different ways of doing things. And literally none of it is documented. Like you have to create a, a readme to initialize a, a repository. All of them just have the regular default text of a readme on them. And it annoys me, but not enough so much that I go back and fix it. Like, because I do weird stuff with my, like my Qtile that I'm using right now has a script that goes along with it. And it's not, they're not in the same directory. Like the Q, the Q theme script is in my scripts directory and the Qtile stuff is in the Qtile directory, right? But they go together and really you can't use one without the other because if you want to be able to change to different themes and stuff, you have to have the script. I didn't write any of that stuff down. Now it's fine for me because I know what I'm doing, but I, probably once a week someone will leave a comment somewhere or email me saying Matt how do I use your i3 ricer script or how do I use your i3 configuration files and I either have to answer them or ignore them which unfortunately half the time I ignore them because they just don't have time to answer the question but it would save me a lot of time if my lazy ass would actually put down in the readme somewhere how to go about you know do, using the things that I put out there for the public. My problem is I'm not, despite having had a channel for four years and having, you know, so many subscribers, I'm not used to being a, you know, a public figure, which just is insane to say. <laughs> but So I'm not used, used to that, but it's definitely something that I need to improve on is doing, because of the public facing nature of the things that I do, I have to do a better job of creating those readme so that when people want to use my i3 stuff or my Qtile stuff, they can go and say, you know, this is how I do it. So you have to document your documentation, Matt. Don't you? I know. know. <laughs> yeah, but here's here's my problem. I am too lazy to go back and redocument what I've already documented. That's my problem. Yeah, I'm there with you. Like, uh, then I have so much stuff. Like the more recent stuff, like if I use Qtile right now, I could easily do the documentation and read me for the Qtile stuff. And same thing with i3 because I just used it. If I wanted to go back and, and document stuff for like DWM, it would be harder because especially my older DWM stuff, I did stuff differently than in the more, more recent DWM stuff. So the older stuff that is still out there, you know, is really use at your own risk because I'm not going to be able to help because I have no clue what I did. Like absolutely no clue. Like, um... One of my DWM stuff used DWM blocks. I couldn't use DWM blocks right now if someone paid me to do so because I don't remember how to do it. I, I've been using status 2D for so long uh, and, and SL status for so long that, you know, I know how to do that. I don't know how to remember how to use DWM blocks. I just, <laughs> I don't know. Someone asked me, like, I don't know. I don't know. So it's, it's, You know, <laughs> sorry. It, it brings up a good point because... I am one of those people. I will get mad if they don't have a readme of how to use a certain application from Git GitHub. But I'm also too lazy to actually put a readme to how to do a script or whatever <laughs> whatever I was doing. So I, I don't know what the good halfway point that is there. Well, I yeah, think I think sometimes you have to like you just have to like pare it down. You know, it's like, uh, I can't do this anymore. So you <laughs> remove it or you put it like archive it somewhere as a read only and just say, I, I think I've done that a couple times where I just say, 
this was good for uh, Debian bullseye, not good for bookworm or something like that. You know, it's like, oh, it doesn't make sense to use this particular method for what you've got going now. Because like, for example, I mean, remember I3 gaps was a completely separate project at one point. Now they've merged their code and now I3 is I3. But I mean, they had, there was two completely different source codes. That's a good, that's a good idea to go through and either just kind of put everything, all the repositories that I know I'm never going to document and just put it in an as is folder. Like you want to use this stuff, you're on your own. But I think, so I, I'm this, I, I'm probably gonna have a couple projects. So the, the, I have two big projects that I want over to uh, kind of take over. And one of them is this readme thing where I go back through and just some of the more recent stuff, at least actually document things that I've done in those things, not only for the public facing nature of, you know, the channel or whatever, but for me too, because it will allow me to go back and use some of those things and relearn the things that I've forgotten. Because I like, I, I, I couldn't set up awesome window manager right now. If someone paid me to, I've done it a couple times, but I don't really remember the things that I used to do now. And I'm very, very poor with Lua. So I'd have to kind of recreate myself that. So that's one example, right? So there's stuff like that, that I could do. So that's one big project that I really do want to sit down and do. The other one is <laughs> I, I finally decided I'm just going to rebuild my entire music collection that has nothing to do with any of the notes stuff, but I don't want to pay for Apple music forever. So I eventually want to be able to use my hosted music stuff, but I can't until it's actually, you know, listenable and, and properly tagged and all that stuff so yeah all right uh do you guys have anything else you want to talk about when it comes to notes i do have a question actually go ahead what triggers you to write a note in particular is it i'm more asking like when you're out and about what is something that you would say oh i need to make a note of this type of thing because i've noticed sometimes i have problems with like i know i should have wrote a note but i didn't and then I try to go back and I'm like, I can't remember what I did or what I was doing. And so I, I'm kind of asking for my own personal self, to be honest. What is something that helps to trigger you to like, okay, I need to do a note right now? Oh, well, for me, it's just I have a random thought that I need to write down. So usually it's you, my biggest one, at least for the, the channel or whatever, is like, oh, that's a cool idea for a video. I'm going to write it down. Or I have a cool idea for a story that I want to write or a, a book that I want to read or something like that. Uh, so there's that. And then when I'm actually reading a book or something like that, I'll often go through and take notes in a note taking application for that just because I don't write in the you know, margins. It's easier to find if it's somewhere you know, that I can find it. So that's usually what I do. Um, but also I, I have notes open. Like Iotis is always on a workspace for me. So I always have that there. Like it's always open. So, yeah, I have the same thing. I have Genie open all the time and it just happens to be like, you know, there's a, uh, the tree browser is there. And so if I want to, I can just insert a file. But the other thing is I've written two scripts basically for the terminal. So, and since you use micro uh, sometimes, Nate, it's just like a, I have one script that just says new note. And, and you, so you're in the terminal and you say new note and it actually creates a, a date specific markdown file and then opens that file in whatever your editor would be, okay? And then you can just start typing something within that markdown file. I, and then I have another script that just says, uh, that's just notes and it opens NeoVim and then goes to my notes directory, which happens to be in my projects. I have a projects folder and then a notes folder. And that is the one that actually gets synchronized with Nextcloud. And it's so NeoVim just happens to go right there. And I can create a note simply that way as well. So there's two different ways kind of to do the same thing. Okay. Yeah. I'll take that advice because I, like I said, I've got to get better at it. And uh, hip dad, I wish I had the money to hire a secretary. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> Even though Matt wants to ban him. You know what's the thing, guys? You know, we are by definition as Linux users, and everybody in the chat I think falls into this, and we're tinkerers. And so for us to have notes while we are tinkering is all you know, this is my this is the pitch that I made to Matt like oh so many months ago. It's like as tinkerers, we are we actually would benefit by having some type of de note documentation while we're actually tinkering to go and refer back to that will say, oh, that's where it broke down. Or that was a great idea. Maybe I should put that in my in my notes so that I don't forget how to install a, a 
some type of Docker container, for example, or what have you. It doesn't even matter what, what the subject is, but having a, having a note that you can refer back to, especially on success. You know, when you have a successful uh, process while you're tinkering, you want to be able to repeat that. And that's one of the only ways I know how to do is to like, oh, crap. Yeah, <laughs> I need to write that down because I'll definitely forget how to do that. Yeah, the documentation thing, I I've talked about this before. Uh, since then, Drew has just been completely game changing for me. Like I I've used the the NFS and the AutoFS one that I made probably ten times since then because I can't remember any of that stuff. Like it just goes in one ear and right out the other in my eyes and right out. Because no, it's not like it's super complicated. It's just like you got to put you know things in a certain order when you're creating your your AutoFS stuff, and it just I don't remember it. So having it written down has just been so good. And there's been like um, I talked about this last week, having like th there's one line to create a snapper snapshot for Butterfest that I use all the time, but I never remember it. Like I always try to make it more complicated than it actually is. It's just dash dash create, but I think that there's something else that I have to put on there, and there's not. So I have to ri I've written that down. So uh, having the documentation has just been so good, and it it uh, so yeah. I thank you for getting me into that. I really it, it's great. It's it, it has been a rabbit hole. So sometimes it feels like, you know, but because I've made it basically a habit, it hasn't, it, you know, it's been really good. So anyways, let's go ahead and move on to the nuggies of the week. Now, this is the last part of the podcast, and this is the part where we talk about things or applications, tips, tricks, things like that, where we want to share them with you. And uh, that's the kind of stuff that we do. So we, most of the time it's apps. Sometimes it's a trip or trick. So that's what we're going to do. Nuggies of the week. Uh, Drew, your nuggie of the week, please. So I already kind of like spilled the beans. It's I don't know if it's Gitia or Giti, which is an open uh, source self-hosted Git service. It's a lightweight, per, like a lightweight alternative to things like GitHub and GitLab. And I know that you can actually, I didn't, I think Matt, you told me this a couple weeks ago, maybe that you can home, you can actually host your own GitLab like locally. Uh, but I just decided I was going to use Giti. I just thought it was something that I wanted to try. And I was able to install it on actually on the same server that I have uh, Nextcloud running on. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to like, you know, merge anything about that. But, it, you know, I thought that um, like with Nate, for example, you it's like, you know, some of the stuff that you want to keep private I thought that that was something that I might want to try and do. I want not everything to go to GitHub. I don't want to, even though it is private, you know, you could set up that particular repo as private. I would actually prefer to self host and then keep that, you know, my own, you know, truly my own. Cool. I still haven't tried try to install it. I've had it open in a tab for ages and I want to, I want to give it a try because sim similar to just having a repository that you just have at home. That's like a backup of stuff. And just for you, it sounds great. Just I haven't got to it yet. Uh, Nate, your nuggie of the week. So mine is actually a application that I use side side note. I actually do a little bit of woodworking and home repairs. And one of the, one of the applications I started using to, because I measure out my rooms and such, is actually Sweet Home 3D. And there's a free version of it. And it is a very useful application of setting up basically a visual on your computer screen of what you can do. So, like, for me, I'm fixing to move an office. So, this is not going to be my permanent office. I'm fixing to move to a little bit bigger area, mostly because of my business. And so... Now I can take those measurements, put them into Sweet Home 3D, and then I can lay out exactly what I want. So I can, you know, put a chair here. I want a desk here. Uh, I want sofa here. I need to add a couple more, you know, outlets, whatever. And I can put all that into the Sweet Home, and it's free. It does use your GPU a little bit and does use your CPU quite a bit, but it is a very awesome application. If you're interested in, like me, doing home repairs or just doing some things, getting a layout and getting a blueprint. Cool. I'd be useless at that. <laughs> I, I have uh, four thumbs when it comes to building anything. All right. So I'm going to switch mine out from what I have in the notes. So one of the things that I didn't talk about during this week in FOSS was that 
I've so I did in fact buy myself another keyboard. <laughs> I have a, I I have a problem. Okay, so I I did just buy a dactyl manuform like a month and a half, two months ago or something, and I love this keyboard. It's so good. It is it it, it very well may be my final keyboard that I actually settled down on because it is really that good. But it's really really chonking big. Like it's it, it's tall, and it takes up a lot of space. So what I wanted to do is before I settle down and just not buy any more keyboards until the next time I buy a keyboard anyways, is to try something a lot smaller. And I, I bought myself a pre-built corn keyboard off from eBay for a really good price. And I want to give that a try. Now, if you've never seen a corn keyboard, it's a, uh, it's very, very small. I can't hold it up because I ain't got it yet. It, it's a, basically a 40% keyboard. You're going to use a lot of layers. But the reason why I mention it is because now that I know I'm going to try something smaller, I needed to start preparing myself for that 40% form factor and one of the ways to do that is to switch to home road home row mods and that's my nuggie of the week is home road mod, mods these are game changing if you can get used to them i'm not sure i'm there yet because you really do have to get the timing done so basically what home road mods do is they move the shift right all shift control alt and windows key to the home row where you rest your fingers and basically the way you can do this is through software make it so that when you tap the key it just does asdf or hjkl and then when you hold the key it does the modifier so like for example i had s be both s and shift and what that allowed me to do is basically keep my hands on the home row and still use the modifier keys it is I'm surprised, first off, how easy it was to get used to. Like, I, I thought it was going to be, like, a, a something I had to it'd take months to get used to. Within, like, 10, 15 minutes, I was used to it. It was very, very good. I will say that the biggest problem, though, is that with the technology, the way you control the keys in terms of hold and tap, it requires you to kind of time the difference between a tap and a hold. And getting that timing down to the millisecond is very important and very freaking hard. I haven't got it there yet, so I got mo I got it to the point where it will work 90% of the time, but every once in a while, I will roll the keys, so I'm kind of pe pressing three at the same time, so I'm basically typing too fast, and it will do a, do a, a boo-boo, like it will press the key that I'm not supposed to do, and so it's, it's not great, but yeah, if you are someone who is a keyboard nerd, and you're like a keyboard layout nerd, trying home, load, home row mods is like something that you should definitely try because I think that a, a lot of people would like it. It's definitely not for everyone. I've gone back and forth a couple times now because that extra 10-15% where it just doesn't work where I end up pressing S end the key that I'm trying to actually type as a capital letter, you know, doesn't, you know, it's not something that I really like to do because I type a lot. So I've gone back and forth, but I, if I can get that timing down right, oh man, it's going to be so good. All right. So, those are the Nuggies of the Week, and that's the podcast. So if you want to watch us live, we do this podcast every Tuesday at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. You can watch the live version. We have a good time. Now, we don't respond always to the chat, but we do read everything in the chat. So if you've been in there trolling us, we know that you've been there trolling us. Hip Dad, you... Er... <laughs> <laughs> we 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 know we know when you troll us. We just don't comment on it because you don't feed the trolls. Uh, but anyways, we record us live every Tuesday at eight o'clock p.m. Eastern time. That's at YouTube.com/slash the Linuxcast. If you can't join us live, we we post the edited version, usually hosted by Mr. Nate, there on Saturday evenings. And the, the edited version sounds way better, and it takes out all of the ums, which is probably a good thing. That's like removes half the podcast apparently. So you can catch all of, you can catch the edited version on the YouTube channel as well as on every podcatcher available and known to man, including Apple Podcasts. And if you do use it on if you do listen on Apple Podcasts, make sure you leave a review for us. We'd really appreciate that. So if you want to get in contact with us, the best way to do that is through email. The email is email at the, the linuxcast.org. Email I was gonna say email at the podcast dot org again uh, email at the linuxcast.org is the email address if you want to address address that to one of the co-hosts here i can forward that on as well you can also find all of the rest of the contact information for the podcast itself at the linuxcast.org slash contact drew has a youtube channel he's at just a, at youtube.com slash just a guy linux there you'll find stuff on nextcloud and window managers and a whole bunch of debian stuff it's awesome you should definitely check it out go give him a subscribe nate also has a brand new uh, linux or brand new youtube channel 
and uh, you're going to have to forgive me, Nate. I've already forgotten what the name is. Give it to us again. It's just Nate Picks Tech World. Okay, Nate Picks Tech World. Links for all that stuff will be in the video description and on the website as well. So make sure you head on over. Give both of those fellas a subscribe and uh, follow their content as well. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linkscast. I truly do appreciate it. That's all of uh, the people that are floating around us right now. Nate, you're going to have to make them all float around now. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. Just, that's fine. Uh, anyways, thanks everybody who does support me. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs>